good day. Welcome to part 2 of this video series on journalizing transactions of merchandising business. In this video, I will be discussing discounts and freight terms. There are two types of discount. Trade discount and cash discount. Trade discount is a reduction from the lease price or catalog price offered by the seller to attract more customers or to encourage potential customers to buy and hopefully even buy in bulk or large quantities. Trade discount is not recorded. Cash discount, on the other hand, is a reduction from the invoice price offered by the seller to encourage buyers to pay early or promptly. Cash discount is recorded by the seller as sales discount and by the buyer using the account title purchase discount. Let's have this problem. The lease price and the trade discount in terms of percent are given. We are being asked to compute for the invoice price. Invoice price is computed by deducting the amount of the trade discount from the lease price. So, Lease price of 20,000 pesos less trade discount of 2,000 pesos. Computed by multiplying the lease price of 20,000 by 10% will give us 18,000 pesos invoice price. Another solution is simply to multiply the lease price by the difference between 100% and the trade discount of 10%. So, 100% minus 10% equals 90%. Multiply that 90% by the lease price of 20,000 and we will get the same invoice price of 18,000 pesos. Let's try another problem. Here, two trade discounts in terms of percent are given. How do we get the invoice price? Deduct the amount of the first trade discount computed by multiplying 25,000 pesos by 10% from the lease price of 25,000 to get 22,500. Then, Compute the amount of the second trade discount. This 22,500 times 5%. The second trade discount. To get 1,125. Subtract this amount from 22,500 to get the invoice price of 21,375 pesos. A shorter solution is to multiply the lease price of 25,000 pesos by 90% and then multiply the product by 95% to get the same invoice amount of 21,375. How did we get the 90%? 100% minus the first trade discount of 10%. How about this 95%? 100% minus the second trade discount of 5%. Let's move forward to cash discount. Let's say we have this term, 2 over 10 and over 30. The 2 here is the cash discount in terms of percent, while the 10 is the discount period in terms of days. N means net. But personally, I prefer to think of it as no. 
you'll know the reason why a little later. 30 is the credit period. Again, in terms of days. So, what does this 2 over 10 and over 30 mean? The buyer will get a 2% discount if he pays within 10 days from the invoice date or the date of purchase. If he pays after the 10th day, he will get no discount. Now you know why I prefer to think of N as no. But whether he likes it or not, he has to pay within 30 days from the date of purchase or invoice date. Another credit term, 2 over 5, 1 over 10, and over 30. This means that the buyer has 30 days from the date of purchase or invoice date within which to pay the seller. If he pays within 5 days from the invoice date, he will be entitled to a 2% discount. If he pays after the 5th day, but within 10 days from the invoice date, he will get 1% discount. If he pays after the 10th day, he will not get any discounts. Let's have another one. 3 over EOM, N over 60. EOM means end of month. This credit term, 3 over EOM, N over 60, connotes that the buyer has 60 days from the date of purchase or invoice date within which to pay the seller. If he pays on or before the end of the month of purchase, he will be entitled to a 3% discount. If he pays after the end of the month of purchase, he will get no discount. This one now. 3 over 10 EOM N over 90. This means that the buyer is entitled to a 3% discount if he pays within 10 days from the end of the month of purchase. Take note. From the end of the month of purchase, not from the date of purchase or invoice date. Of course, he gets no discount. If he pays after the 10th day from the end of the month of purchase, whether he likes it or not, he has to pay within 90 days from the date of purchase or invoice date. Another very important topic to know for successful journalization of transactions of a merchandiser is the freight terms. First, FOB destination. In FOB destination, ownership of the goods is transferred to the buyer upon receipt of the goods by the buyer. If that is the case, while the goods are in transit on the way to the buyer, who do you think owns the goods or the merchandise inventory? The seller still owns the goods. So that in case the goods are stolen while in transit, the seller suffers the loss. If the seller still owns the goods while in transit, who do you think must shoulder the transportation cost? The seller, of course, because he is still the owner of those goods in transit. By the way, FOB here means free on board. So we can say that when it's FOB destination, 
the freight or delivery cost or transportation cost is free for the buyer until the goods reach their destination. Next, FOB shipping point. In this freight term, ownership of the goods is transferred to the buyer upon shipment by the seller to a common carrier or courier. If the goods are stolen while in transit, the buyer suffers the loss because by then, the goods are already owned by him. Who must shoulder the freight cost or the transportation cost? The buyer, of course. Now, let's uh, review. Who owns the goods in transit when the term is FOB destination? The seller. How about when it's FOB shipping point? The buyer owns the merchandise in transit. Now, let me give you a tip for easy recall. Just remember, Tese and Shibu. Tese, Shibu. In FOB destination, the seller owns the goods in transit. Shibu, meaning in FOB shipping point, the buyer owns the goods in transit. So, Dese and Shibu. Not difficult to keep in mind. Just think of Dese as a nickname of someone whose first name is Desery. So, Dese, destination, seller. Then, Shibu. Sounds like Cebu or Shabu. Very easy to keep in mind. Shipping point, buyer. Shibu. Aside from FOB destination and FOB shipping point, you also need to know about the terms freight prepaid and freight collect. Freight prepaid means that the seller will actually pay the freight cost to the courier or carrier, while freight collect signifies that the buyer will be the one to pay the freight cost or delivery cost to the courier or carrier. Please remember that the freight terms FOB destination and FOB shipping point determine who must debit the account title freight in or freight out. While the terms freight prepaid and freight collect tell us who must credit cash for the payment of the delivery cost. If it's FOB destination, the seller must debit the account title freight out because he is the one who shoulders the freight cost when the term is destination. On the other hand, in FOB shipping point, the buyer must debit freight in since it is he who shoulders the transportation cost when it's FOB shipping point. In case of freight prepaid, the seller must be the one to credit cash. While in freight collect, it must be the buyer. That's it for now.